Welcome back to Arrival Entertainment, everybody. I hope you had a great Christmas, New Year's. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then I hope you had a good holiday, whatever you do celebrate. Hope you all had a safe New Year, and thus ends another year of being on YouTube, another year of movies. But before we say goodbye to the shitstorm that was 2020, it is time once again to talk about my top 10, 10 favorite movies of 2020. So we all know that 2020 was a disaster of a year. A lot of things got ruined for people, a lot of things got screwed up, and movies were no exception. So I feel like a lot of favorite and best of videos that are going to be on YouTube are going to be very different from each other. You know, a lot of movies that were supposed to come out in 2020 got delayed till 2021, so lists are going to be all over the place. So just please keep in mind that, like every year, this is my list. I label it my favorite movies of the year, not the best of the year, because... Some of my favorites might not be your favorites. Instead of bitching and complaining or whatever it is, let me know in the comment section at the end of the video your favorite movies of 2020. Also, there were a lot of movies this year that I didn't get a chance to see. For instance, I haven't had a chance to watch Soul yet. And I know people are probably going to say, it's free to watch on Disney+, Plus. why didn't you just watch it? I just didn't get around to seeing it. I like to make these videos either the end of December or the first week of January. Just so I can, you know, start the year completely fresh. And if I don't get a chance to see a movie that came out one year, when it gets to the time I make this video, then it just doesn't make the cut. I'm sure Soul is a fantastic movie, just like everyone else has been saying. I just haven't had a chance to actually watch it. I haven't also seen Wonder Woman 1984, Let Him Go, News of the World. There's a lot more that I can get into. So if you're expecting a movie to be on this list, but it's not on the list, just keep in mind that... I didn't see much movies this year, and it's probably not going to be on the list, but out of the movies that I have seen, I have whittled down to 10 with some honorable mentions, so let's do the honorable mentions first. My honorable mentions include The Call of the Wild, Sonic the Hedgehog, Unhinged, and The Hunt. All movies that I enjoyed, uh, again, I feel like people aren't really going to consider those the best movies or like, you know, Oscar-worthy movies, but they're the movies that I enjoyed out of the ones that aren't on my list. So let's get started with my actual list with number 10. Starting out at number 10, we have First Cow, a movie that I didn't really know about when it came out in theaters. For a lot of people, this was the last movie they saw in theaters before theaters actually closed down, but I had to wait till the Blu-ray to come out to see it. And I really enjoyed this movie. I know a lot of people were kind of mixed on it. They were like, oh, it's such a slow-paced movie, or I didn't... Didn't think it was all that interesting, and I can understand that. This is a slow burn, period piece drama, but for my opinion, I thought it did. I thought it was done pretty well. I like the actors. I like the story. I was interested in what was going on throughout the movie, but I can definitely understand if some people didn't like this because of how slow paced it is. But for what it's worth, for me, First Cow, I thought was a pretty good movie. <laughs> Next at number 9 is a movie that actually premiered in 2019, but I didn't get a chance to see it, it didn't come to my area until 2020, and I didn't even get a chance to really see it until the Blu-ray came out of that this year, and that is The Color Out of Space. Now, I didn't know what to expect with this movie, I didn't watch any of the trailers, I didn't watch any reviews of the movie, and I just went in completely blind, I didn't know what the book was about, or I think it was a book, yeah. I'm not sure what the source material was about, I just went in completely blind, and I love this movie. Like, I thought about this movie so much after I saw it. The visuals are incredible. The story is bonkers, but the story is so engaging. It's kind of a mix of sci-fi, horror, and thriller. Again, I don't know if the source material is like that, but if it is, then I definitely want to check it out because this movie I thought was fantastic. The performances are great, especially from Nicolas Cage. I love Nicolas Cage. And uh, yeah, not much more I can add without going into spoilers. I definitely recommend The Color Out of Space. Next is a movie that I did review when the Blu-ray came out, and that is The Gentleman. God, this movie was such a surprise. I didn't know what to expect going into it, very similar to Color Out of Space. I didn't look up the trailers, I didn't look up any reviews for it. I just saw the amazing cast list, and I thought, okay, if all this cast is in this movie, then it's gotta be something good and I ended up loving it. It's funny, it's action-packed. I loved every single character in this movie. I don't know if they're gonna do a sequel, but I would love to see a sequel to The Gentleman. And I just bought the 4K for Black Friday. The 4K looks amazing. If you haven't seen The Gentleman, definitely recommend it. It is such a good movie. 
So I know I mentioned earlier that I didn't get a chance to see Soul, but another Disney Pixar movie that I did get a chance to see that I really liked was Onward. Now I know a lot of people didn't really care for Onward all that much, and I can kind of see that. This movie does borrow a lot of elements from other Pixar movies that were done better, but I looked at it as it's done well, and if it's not broken, then don't fix it. Sure, I would have liked to have seen something of originality in terms of the story, but I like the world that was set up. I thought it was pretty interesting. I like the quest that the characters have to go on, and I love the chemistry between Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. Sure, Soul is probably the better movie, because it's got better reviews, but I really enjoyed this movie, and I think it's kind of underrated. Another movie that was a really big surprise and that I didn't know what to expect going in was Bad Boys for Life. Mainly because I thought the first one was okay, it was pretty enjoyable, it was a lot of fun, but I really didn't like the second one. I thought the second one was really terrible. So I didn't know what to think of this one when I went into the movie, and I was surprised to find out that this was, in my opinion, the best of the three Bad Boy movies. They are planning another Bad Boys movie, which... I really want to see because the way things left off in this made me really excited. The chemistry between Martin Lawrence and Will Smith was great. The new characters were great. They didn't force anything down anyone's throats. They didn't try to say this character is better than this character. I thought everything was great. The action is the best of the three movies. There's no over-the-top slow-mo like in the first movie and it's not shaky cam bullshit from the second movie. The action was really well handled and I'm glad they didn't give this movie to Michael Bay. I'm glad he didn't direct this movie because this movie I ended up being better than the first two. I don't hate Michael Bay, but I don't really like a lot of his movies. So yeah, I'm curious to see what they're going to do for Bad Boys 4, but for now, Bad Boys for Life, really good. Next on my list is my personal favorite horror movie of this year, and that is The Invisible Man. Yet another big surprise, because I thought the trailers for this looked like garbage. I thought the trailers spoiled everything, and when I actually saw the movie, I was like, wow, that wasn't in the trailer. I didn't expect to see that. That wasn't shown. Total big surprise. It didn't copy off the original Invisible Man. I'm, I guarantee you this is nothing of what the book was. Of course, I haven't read the book, but for all I know, it could, there could be elements from the book in here. I'm not sure. But I love the characters. I love the direction they took with this. Everything I thought was handled so well, and this is a good example on how to do a modern remake right, and I still stand by that statement. If you haven't seen this movie, obviously, I recommend it. At number four, we have my favorite comedy of the year, and that is Bill and Ted Face the Music. This was everything I was hoping it would be. It doesn't take itself seriously. The comedy is just as funny as the first two movies. I know a lot of people didn't really like the effects in this movie, and I can see that. You know, I can kind of understand that. However, I look at it at this. Cheesy, dumb effects gave the original two movies its charm, at least in my opinion it did. And it gave a lot of this movie its charm. I mean, I don't go into a Bill and Ted movie expecting Avengers Endgame effects or Star Wars effects. You know, I don't expect anything like that. Give me cheesy, over-the-top, ridiculous-looking effects that add comedy to the movie, and I'll be completely happy. I loved the two girls that played their daughters in this movie. They weren't they weren't annoying, they weren't forceful, everything I thought was exactly what I wanted it to be. And my only real problem with the movie is the final, I guess, ending of the movie. There wasn't much closure. Because, you know, the third act, I'm not going to spoil it, but the third act is this really great, yeah, they did it moment, and then all of a sudden it just, like, cuts the credits. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're maybe setting something up for a fourth movie, and then I found out that there is no plans for a fourth movie, so I'm like, oh. Okay. Upon rewatch a couple more times, that abrupt ending got a little bit better because I, was, I, I knew what to expect and I was able to accept it more, but it's still worth mentioning. Besides that, everything I thought was fantastic. Definitely something I wanted for this year. It took my mind off a lot of crap that happened in 2020. And yeah, my favorite comedy of the year. Next at number three is a movie that I'm surprised not a lot of people talked about this year, and that is... The Way Back, starring Ben Affleck. I loved everything about this movie. This, at one point, was my favorite movie of the year, and then I saw more movies, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Ben Affleck, I thought, was perfect in this movie. You can tell that this is a project that he really wanted to do because, 
I see a lot of what Ben Affleck went through in his past in this movie. The director, uh, what was it, Gavin O'Connor, he did a fan. He did a great job with this movie. The only real problem with this movie are the secondary characters, particularly the basketball players he has to coach. I thought they could have been developed a little bit better, um, but besides that, everything was great. And it's not really much more I can say. All I can say is please watch this movie. It went over people's radar, and it deserves more attention. At number two is very similar to The Color Out of Space. It technically premiered in 2019, but my theaters didn't get it until January. So this counts as a 2020 movie for me, and that is 1917. Oh my gosh, this movie just completely blew me away. I didn't know that the whole movie was going to be at one continuous shot. I mean, it's pretty known at that point, so I'm not really spoiling anything. And, yeah, like, I mentioned in my review that I'm not really huge into war movies. Like, I do like some war movies, but it's not, like, my go-to genre. This movie actually helped with that. Because I was able to experience, it, like, the, the... How do I want to say this? It's the first-person perspective actually added to, like, the realism of you actually being there. Because a lot of war movies, like Saving Private Ryan, is kind of like, oh, you feel like you're actually there in the moment. And while that's true... I think the first-person perspective on this really added to it, and this is a perfect example of that. Gritty, violent, but very, very good. 1917 is a great movie. Technically a 2019 movie, but for me, it's for 2020. All right, we are at number one, my favorite movie of 2020. Now, please keep in mind, again, this is my personal favorite. If you, A lot of people didn't like this movie. That is completely fine. But for me, I really had to think about what movie stuck with me the most in 2020. What movie did I think about the most after I saw it? For me, that movie was Tenet. Now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, you're just a Nolan fanboy. Actually, I just like good movies, and I thought Tenet was a f great movie. I like filmmakers that do weird and different things with their movies. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people just want to see a movie movie, you know, just something to go in and just waste a couple hours. This movie is a puzzle because all the puzzle pieces are in front of you to form the narrative. And no one's expecting you and hoping that you'll put those pieces together so you can see the overall picture of the movie. I still haven't put all the pieces together, but nevertheless, this movie, I'm still thinking about it. Like, I saw this movie back in September when theaters started to reopen. I still think about this movie. I was waiting for the 4K Blu-ray to come out so I can watch it again and put more pieces together. And the more I think about this movie, the more I just love it. And please, I'm not saying if you didn't like this movie, then you don't like movies. That's not what I'm saying at all. It is completely fine if you didn't like this movie. But I'm just telling you my personal thoughts on this movie and why I loved it so much. I can't wait to see what Christopher Nolan does next. And yeah, favorite movie of the year, Tenet. We made it through 2020, everybody. I really hope 2021 is a much better year. And I do want to say something before I end this video. I feel like I disappointed some of my viewers in 2020 because of how crappy the year went. I promised to do more videos, and I didn't really deliver on that. I did start a new show, The Underrated Gem, and I did that for a while, but then I stopped doing it. So... I want to make a promise for 2021 that I will try to do more videos as much as possible. I will try to continue the underrated gem as much as possible. Leave me suggestions for the underrated gem if you have any underrated movies that you want me to check out. And something I want to do this year is I want to do more franchise reviews. For instance, um, what is it? No Time to Die is still coming out in, no in April. At least I hope it's coming out in April. So something I've been puzzling on what I want to do is I want to re-redo the James Bond videos that I did three years ago on my channel. If you don't remember those, I did my favorite movie from each Bond actor, and I want to delete those videos and redo those videos, because I feel like I could do better for those videos. So I want to do videos like that leading up to No Time to Die. After that, there's a new Beatles movie coming out, so I want to do something different and talk about the five theatrical Beatles movies that they did when they were together all the way up to 1970. I will do, I'll probably do those movies after I do the James Bond ones, and I want to continue my Spider-Man videos. Back in 2019, I started to do a series of Spider-Man videos leading up to Far From Home, but because of stuff that happened in my family, I wasn't able to continue those videos, 
But now that Spider-Man 3 is making a lot of big news with Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire possibly returning, I feel like now is a great time to continue it, and I'm really excited to do that. So yeah, that is my New Year's resolution for this channel, is to get, try to give you guys as much content as I possibly can alongside new releases, do more franchise reviews, because I feel like that'll be a lot of fun to do. If you have any suggestions on franchises you would like me to review, let me know down in the comment section, and I'll see if it's worth doing. Guys, thank you for sticking with me through 2020. You guys are the real MVPs of my channel. If I had a uh, YouTube channel, Walk of Fame, you would all be a part of it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully 2021 is a better year. Let's hope. If you like this video, then don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe right here if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time.